Wow. Aren't you all so beautiful? Sitting here at TEDx Perth, 2023. Sitting in a room on the banks of the Swan River and listening to Holman welcome us to country. I too want to talk to you about country today. I'm a Kimberley man. And when we talk about country, we talk about the land, the sea, and the sky. So if we begin a little journey here today from this room, recognising that we're on the banks of a river, in a country that we call Australia, that sits in between a bunch of oceans, that are all on a planet that we call Earth. Earth has contemporaries, and we know many of them. We have Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and yes, we're going to keep Pluto. Yeah. yeah. So these planets, which are in our night sky, some of which we can see, belong to an amazing being that we call Ra, or Sol, or Helios. And to us, this is our sun the source of everything that we are. And our sun, too, has contemporaries in the form of the stars in the sky. And there are something like 200,000 million of these stars, each one highly likely to have its own family of planets. Each one could also be called a solar system. So those 200,000 million stars make up our galaxy, which we call the Milky Way. And our galaxy is one of trillions and trillions and trillions of galaxies in the universe. Well, let's bring ourselves back a little from there. Let's bring ourselves back to here on Earth. We could even rub our feet on the ground just to get a sense of where we are. And I've got a couple of reminders for you tonight about the Earth. And the first reminder I've got for you is the Earth is round. <laughs> yeah, I'm just checking. Are you okay with that? I mean, you can have some time to think about it if you want. And if you do think about it, you might realise it's not quite round. It's kind of flattened at the poles. It sort of bulges at the equator. It's got big holes in it that are full of water that we call oceans. It's got big lumps that we call mountains. But for what we want to talk about here tonight, it's good enough for us to say that the Earth is round. Like a ball. Reminder number one. The second reminder I've got for you tonight is this round Earth that we're all on here right now is turning once a day. And the reason I want to remind you of these really simple things is because I'm wondering if you have thought about them today. That's what I thought. In fact, I wouldn't mind betting that at least once this week, each one of you has denied that the earth turns, made an outright flat denial of the earth turning. Now, you wouldn't do that, would you? But you might if you said something like, let's go and watch the sun go down. Uh-huh. And as soon as you say something like that and then think about what you've said, you know it's a lie. And you go, that's right, the sun's not going down at all. The sun's staying still. And it's the earth that's turning that makes it look like the sun's going down. But you try and talk about that. Try and have a conversation about that without using a whole big 
long sentence with lots of words in that sentence that you probably have to think about a lot. And if you really want to get your message across, you're probably going to have to wave your arms around to make yourself understood. And the reason I see for that difficulty is we don't have any language that talks about the earth turning. None. Not one single piece of language on earth refers to the earth turning. We are still using flat earth language. The sun going down is flat earth language. And I'm going to suggest that every time we open our mouths, when we use flat earth language, that it locks us into a flat earth way of thinking. Because what do you think when you say the sun goes down? You think the sun goes down? I know I do anyway. So it's almost like we need a new word or a new phrase or a new something that brings into our awareness the fact that we are on a planet that is turning, that is also hurtling through space on a journey going around the sun. And we've known this information for at least 400 years now. Galileo, Copernicus, Kepler, Tycho Brahe. These are some of the guys who delivered us the intellectual knowledge 400 odd years ago. And you know, there was probably heaps of guys and girls who knew about it before them. But 400 years ago, it was not particularly cool to talk about any of this stuff. In fact, for a guy called Bruno, things got really hot. They burnt him at the stake. Now, 400 years later, today, we can talk about it as much as we like. It's an open subject. You can even deny that the earth turns if you want, and nothing much is going to happen to you. But it's generally accepted that we live on a round planet that turns once a day, that goes around the sun once a year. And yet we still speak as if it isn't so. Which means we still generally go around thinking as if it isn't so. Which means we're still pretty much living our lives as if it isn't so. So I'm wondering if it isn't time that we did something about this. If it isn't time that we actually started to use this information that these guys went to a lot of trouble to bring to us. Getting burnt at the stake is a lot of trouble, isn't it? And sure, I know we do use this information. We use it in our GPS systems, in our navigation systems, in our space programs. In fact, we have a very good technical and academic understanding of these movements. But what I'm talking about is being able to use this information in your everyday life. Like, what if you were to know right now which way the earth is turning. Mm. What if you were to also know right now which way the earth is going around the sun? What if these two movements in particular were an innate and natural part of your everyday life? What might change in your life? I suspect that some things might change. Because these are movements that are going on in your life, whether you have an awareness of them or not. And these are movements that we can choose to become aware of. And I kind of suspect that if enough of us were to do this, you know, I guess I suspect that you know, 400 years is enough time to sit on the intellectual knowledge. And if we actually started to live this knowledge, there might be some shift. And I guess I, I see these shifts as a realisation that we're all on this planet together. We're all travelling through space together. We're all on, in the same place, in space, together. And, you know, there's a bit of an ideal in me that would like to think that that can foster cooperation between people, between nations, so that we all journey as one. But you can see that I'm kind of delving off here into the realms of speculation in terms of what I would see the benefits of achieving and maintaining and living in a state of awareness of the earth turning and of the earth going around the sun in a very real and practical way.
But what I'm not so speculative about, what I'm a lot more certain of, is that if we did live with this awareness, we would also most certainly begin to speak as if these movements were real. And when we did that, everybody around us would understand what we were saying because they'd be in the same state of awareness and they'd be using some sort of language that reflected that awareness too. Now, I've had a bit of a play with this language thing over the years, as you can imagine, and I've come up with something that works. Now, I'm not going to, claim, I'm not going to try and claim that it's particularly easy or uh, neat and tidy or that it's even going to catch on, but what I am going to do today is try it out on you. So instead of saying, let's go and watch the sun go down, we'd have to say something like, let's go and watch the earth turn away from the part of the sky that the sun is in. <laughs> is that romantic or what? <laughs> and it's like, hey, darling, let's go and watch the earth turn away from the part of the sky that the sun is in. Yeah, she's going to go and watch the sunset with somebody else for sure. <laughs> But the truth is, the earth is turning away from the part of the sky that the sun is in when you go and watch a sunset. And I don't know of a shorter way of telling the truth about that. So what I really like to do, instead of playing around too much more with the words, and let's face it, words are powerful things. In many ways, they shape our reality. If we say the sun's going down, for us, the sun's going down. But if we start to speak as if the earth's turning away from the part of the sky that the sun is in, watch what happens in your life. Mm. Actually, I was having this very conversation with a guy out surfing in Bali. It was a few years ago now. But I always like to give him the credit because he reminded me that when we're in school, in relation to words, we were all taught to spell. What's the, other, what's the other meaning of the word spell? We cast spells on ourselves with the words we use. If we change the words, we can change the spells. And if we've been kidding ourselves about such a fundamental truth for so long and so effectively, what else have we been kidding ourselves about along the way? What other illusions are we living under that might just happen to go away if we manage to crack this flat earth thing that we are also actively participating in. Mm. So how are we going to do this? Well, under a, a night sky, that's fairly easy. We can do it during the day too by watching the passage of the sun across the sky and recognising that the sun's staying relatively still. The stars too are staying relatively still. But even today, what we can do, I can let you know that we're sitting in this room. The earth is turning you from the west to the east and you're doing something just under about 900 miles an hour right now in that direction. How are you feeling? It's okay, you're good at this. <laughs> All you have to do is keep breathing. So if we were under a night sky, what I would do is set you up by looking in this western sky where we'd expect to see stars disappearing as the earth turned this way. And we would see stars appearing over this eastern horizon. Recognising that none of them are moving. We are and when we look at the north and the south, we have north here and south here, we've got some interesting things going on because the earth's turning around this axis. And then if we bring ourselves again back to the, the banks of the Swan River here in Perth, Perth is 32 degrees below the equator. In other words, we're 32 degrees around the curve of the earth towards the South Pole from the equator. So from the equator to the South Pole is 90 degrees. So 32 degrees is about a third of that. And how that translates for us here tonight is we are 32 degrees around the curve of the Earth compared to where we would be at the equator, which means we are actually tipped over at 
32 degrees. So how that translates for us here tonight is this axis of rotation is tilted like so. So if we look out here in the southern sky, we're going to see the southern cross appearing to rotate around a point out here. If we look out here in the northern sky, we see stars appearing to do big sweeping arcs because they're turning around a point down here somewhere. So it's really quite simple. And I would like to invite you to go out under a real sky tonight and other nights and try it out for yourself. And you too can take yourselves into that state of awareness that we might even call earth-turning consciousness. Thank you very much.